Hi, this is Matthew with Downtime Activities, and today we are going to be doing the first of what will hopefully be a longer series of videos that'll come out of the Help Action series. This is where we're going to take a concept, a rule, a idea, break it down, give you some really usable advice on it, and nowhere better to start than where every good campaign should start, and that's with a session zero. We're gonna break down session zero, what you need to do, what you can do, and what you probably should do before session zero is done. First things first, this video is going to hopefully be useful across the board no matter what kind of group you are playing with. But to break a couple things down, if this is a new group of players versus a pre-existing group that's played together before, step one is just going to be meeting each other, getting to know each other, all that kind of stuff. Make sure that you're at least pretty well acquainted before you start playing together. Along with that, if this is a digital versus a in-person game, that can have some different things as well that need to get addressed. The most important of which is, if it's a digital group, make sure that before session zero is done, everybody has at least a pretty good grasp of the digital tool you're using. And so that when session one finally arrives, everyone's not having to ask how to roll dice and move characters on the map and stuff like that. You all have a pretty good grasp and can move from there. From here on though, all advice is useful for new or old groups and for online or in-person play. Another very important step, especially for a new group, but if you haven't done this with your existing group, something I highly recommend is establishing your social contract. Uh, social contract meaning kind of laying down the rules socially for the game. Everybody needs to kind of lay out what they're comfortable with, what they're uncomfortable with. If you're going to do any sort of things in your game, if it's kind of a, a horror game or something that has uncomfortable topics, you need to make sure that the people you're with won't be made uncomfortable and have an unpleasant experience because of the game you're playing. You need to lay everything out on the table, talk with each other, and have just a good healthy conversation as adults uh, to lay out what can and can't go on during play. With all that stuff out of the way, let's get into the things that have to be done before Session Zero is over. First and foremost, character creation. Throughout this process, you're going to be discussing the world, discussing your characters. Do not leave session zeros with blank spots on character sheets, unless it's for maybe personality traits or things along those lines. Make sure that when you show up for session one, there's not people flipping through a bunch of books to figure out what their abilities do. Make sure that everyone leaves with their character statted and everything recorded down so that when you show up for session one, you are ready to play. Along with that, you need to determine what the starting level is for the campaign and what sort of additional other things you're doing with character creation. If you're giving additional starting equipment, you need to lay that out from the beginning so that people know what they can and can't have with their starting characters. This is also your time as the DM to break down the setting for your players. Whether you're creating the world there with your players, which we'll get into in just a moment, or you already have the campaign kind of decided and you're just sharing that information with them, it's very important that everybody leaves with a pretty good idea of what the world is going to be so that they can have their characters made and really feel like they're a part of that world. You don't want your characters to kind of be this desperate band of people that belong in five different settings. So you have to kind of lay out, this is the setting, this is the idea of the campaign, this is the sort of vibe, the sort of feel we're going for, and then people can really build into that. And it should be collaborative. If your players have a cool idea for their character's backstory, and it can be a part of the world you've come up with, find a way to ingrain it into the world and make their characters feel like they belong. With character and world creation to the side and done, the other thing is this kind of the bookkeeping, boring, but very important stuff. You need to establish where you're going to play, whether it's at a game store, or someone's house, or digitally online and which platform you're going to be using. And you also need to decide when you will play. Some groups can make it work to kind of schedule more last minute, but it's very hard with schedules conflicting and stuff to not have some sort of idea of this is the day, this is the time we want to meet. Especially if you're meeting digitally, making sure if there's any time differences or anything like that. But that's all laid out from the beginning and you guys have a good idea of at least when session one is going to be so that everyone can plan for that and that there's no last minute changes barring any sort of emergencies. Along with this, another bookkeeping thing is literal books or pencils or dice, whatever players need to play the game. Uh, if 
you are, as the person running the game, running for a group of new people, they probably don't have player's handbooks. They probably don't have a lot of the things that you might already have if you're a more experienced player. Make sure that everybody has access to everything they need. And if it's new players and they don't have dice yet, and you have, like most RPG nerds, a mountain of them sitting somewhere in your house, you can offer some of them to them. Or maybe as a group, go and pick out some dice so that people can buy their first set of dice and you can spread your addiction onto them. Either way, you need to make sure that everybody has the tools they need to play and that you're not showing up for session one and then all of a sudden everybody's handing one old half-broken pencil around in a circle trying to record damage as the first combat ensues. With all the have-to things out of the way, let's get to the could-do and should-do things. First off, we're going to talk about creating a campaign collaboratively as a group. This is not necessary for a session zero, but it's something I highly recommend, especially if it's a group of people coming together that don't have one person ready to DM who's had this big elaborate world in mind. It makes for a really fun world if everybody kind of helps create it together. And there's lots of videos and things online you can find to break down some systems for this. But what I found was a really good way, the first time I ran a campaign for my group of friends was to literally just make a list. I listed out a bunch of different ideas that came to me or I saw on YouTube or I saw in media, things that I thought were cool, just kind of vague ideas like political turmoil or a religious uprising or a nation led by dragons or whatever else comes to your mind and just jot these down. And when your players are all gathered around, you can just go down the list and each one that kind of strikes a chord with somebody, they can say, and you can kind of put a mark on it or discuss it more with them. And collaboratively with that, even if you already have a world set up, you can use these different bullet points to just add different conflicts that might already exist in your world or characters or concepts that make the world more fleshed out and interesting. And then when the players encounter that, It'll be an exciting thing where they're like, I remember when we, we talked about this and that they have some ownership in that world that they're now playing in. It's a really, really cool way to do it and makes for a world that you maybe already had in mind to be much more interesting because instead of just your creativity being put to work, you have your entire group's creativity. Also, any jokes that are made during session zero, please record them. I am a firm believer in the any good joke can and will be used against you style of DMing. So if they say some offhand remark off to the corner, just jot a little note of that and turn it into some sort of wacky side quest later on. The players will love it, you will love it, it will be memorable, trust me. With the campaign setting decided and the world more fully fleshed out, it's time to talk about when and where the campaign is going to be beginning. This does not have to happen, but it definitely should happen. It's good to let your players know what the start of the campaign is going to look like. Their characters' backstories need to kind of tie in and end where the new story is going to begin. And if they don't know where that is, they can't really do that. You can be fairly vague and definitely don't divulge the opening plot that they're going to be kind of unwrapping as the first session unfolds, but definitely give them an idea of where it's going to be, the kind of setting in that specific little area and let them decide why their character's there. Was their character from the town this is going to start in? Did they just come here from out of town? All these decisions being made beforehand will help that first session group get together dynamic run smoother. And that's a really tricky thing to nail even with this. So anything you can do to help make that process move along is a really good idea. You can also use this time to establish character relationships. Another not necessary thing to do, but something that helps a lot with making people get invested in the world and into each other's characters. If you have two characters who have a conversation during session zero and decide that there's something shared in their backstory that can really give them a sort of connection from the start, it will once again make that session one party comes together moment happen more naturally and feel a lot better. And it'll also tie both the characters deeper into the world as each other's lore and backstory kind of entwines together and makes both characters have history that exists in the world collectively. And lastly, Definitely not a necessity here, but something that I love doing. I did in the very first campaign I ran for a big group and something I've done quite a bit since then is character secrets. 
we could probably do an entire other video on character secrets and probably will uh, but to break it down in just a kind of quick bite size idea take each character out of the room or each player I should say and talk with them about what's something interesting unique potentially dangerous about their characters that the rest of the party would definitely not know about them and then decide on that set it aside and then you can hint at it or use it to kind of bring other NPCs involved in their backstory into the story. It can be a thing that has really exciting, sometimes dramatic and heartbreaking reveals as uh, those secrets come out and unfold. Sometimes they don't come out at all or don't come out in a way that really makes a big change or shift in the campaign, but a couple of character secrets coming out in key moments can make for really cool interactions to happen in the game. It's free to do, you know, it's just something to have on the back burner in your brain as a dungeon master, but it is worth the time, definitely, and the creativity you put into it. To sum everything up, Session Zero is your time as a DM to let all the players meet each other and yourself if you're a new group, or just establish your social contract, establish the campaign setting, establish the starting location, establish the players, the relationships they have with each other and the secrets they keep from each other. All of these things to just make session one ready to go. And remember the key is leave with characters decided. Don't leave paperwork for session one. Let session one just be play. That's what session zero is all about, is getting all that stuff done and decided on so that people can just hop in and play when session one arrives. Another important thing to note here is that there should be time between session zero and session one. That time allotted there gives the DM time to make adjustments to the world if need be so that player backstory can kind of have some more buy-in and change in the world, as well as gives players time to kind of chew on the decisions they made, think about their character, what's their character's personality, how are they going to play them, what kind of decision-making processes are going to go through their mind when they're in play, and mechanically, how does their character work? Having that little bit of time between gives both the DM and the players time to just be ready to hop in and play when session one hits. So that is session zero. If you have any comments, any other ideas, things that you think have to be done before a session zero is done, please leave it in the comments down below. If you found this helpful, please give us a like or comment that you like the video. Uh, anything is super, super appreciated. Now go forth, slay dragons, sling spells, roll dice, and enjoy your downtime activities. Should I say Matt or Matthew? I feel like I switch every time. I feel like that's a thing with me in my own life. Or I do that, like people always ask me which I prefer. Existential crisis real quickly here. It's like the duality of me. Which is, which is it today? <laughs> it's like Matt, fun party guy, but like Matthew, I need to be taken seriously. This is a help action. This is Matthew. I need to be taken seriously. You know? I'm, I'm glad I could help you figure that out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your help.